You want to get promoted faster. You have the Power BI skills, but is that enough? Oh, you work hard, but so do others. How can you get promoted faster without having to work 80 hour weeks? How can you get promoted faster without having to sacrifice family, personal life, and maybe even your own health for career gain? Our guest speaker shows us the three key drivers that you need to get promoted faster and tells us how we can control and influence these drivers. He peels back the curtain showing us how the game of promotion is actually played and best of all gives us a playbook so we can play this game better. This is the playbook that I wish I had and could have saved me from so much struggle throughout my career. I'm really happy to share this with you and present to you our guest speaker, Avril Singh or AK. Make sure to follow or connect with him on LinkedIn. Link is in the description below. So the audience gave this a rating of 4.6 out of 5 and here is what they had to say. Awesome event, Kirk D, tremendously valuable, Dan B. And I'm going to read out a bit of Robert's feedback. And he said, my biggest takeaway was about personal branding and the two sides of hard work. And he goes on to say that this was a real eye opener. So my friends, make sure to watch till still the end. Enjoy this recording of our live Talk Power BI event. To join us for future live events, just go to talkpowerbi.com. Today's session... We're going to be talking about how can you get promoted faster? But what's the point if you have to work 80 hour weeks? So we're going to see, is there another way, right? Or do you have to just outwork, out hustle everybody else? Is that, is that the way you crawl up that career ladder? So that's our topic. And we have our special guest, Aviro A.K. Singh. A few requests here again for chat. Make sure to change the chat to send it to all attendees. That way it's a party. You do have a separate question box as well. We most likely will take questions only at the end, but if you have career focused questions, or if you have questions about the topic that uh, you know, you're gonna see the presentation, then put that in the Q and A box so that that's separate. And we're gonna look through the questions and make sure to answer that. And, and, and we love being on Zoom because we can do something exciting. If you have a career question, we can unmute you and, and, and bring you on and have a real conversation uh, so we can guide you. So that's that. And of course, you can always go to talkpowerbi.com to check our upcoming events. With that, let's get started on how to get promoted faster without having to work 80 hour weeks. So let me introduce my speaker. If you haven't guessed so already, we are brothers. And yeah, that's a picture of us from, uh, well, childhood. And uh, well, you know, so my full name is Avichal Singh and now I go by Avi and that's my brother, Avril Singh. He goes by AK, but that's not the reason why he's here. The reason why he's here is this. So I'm just going to bring up his LinkedIn profile. I think that's going to be the easiest. So he has worked across multiple industries, but any company, any industry he has stepped in, he's always had a phenomenal rise to the top, right? It's, it's just been incredible. If you look at his history, I mean, he's gotten promoted at, um, at a record pace at any company, he's, right? I mean, he's outpaced his peers, his colleagues, and he's gotten a promotion almost every year or every other year. And he's, he's he, already at quite a young age, he's a, a vice president and he's just one step away from the C-suite, the I, the next step in his career ladder would be a chief marketing officer. So he's here to share that magic secret with us. But of course, what I also admire about uh, Aviro is that, um, you know, he didn't, he didn't spend 80 hour weeks, right? I mean, that's not, that's not the way he rose to the top. I mean, he has a family, he's got two kids, he spends time there, he's taking vacations, he's been in Mexico, Japan, Kenya, and yeah, he lives a full life. And going back to work, he's always been inspired to kind of mentor others and help others. And, and you know, sometimes you see somebody's rise to the top and, and, and they're like, um, you know, stepping over others to get there. But 
Auberil's story was quite the opposite, right? I mean, he, he's never bur burned his bridges. In fact, most times when he's talked about when he is leaving a job, he has talked about how people cry, right? And so, because yeah, they, they, he builds that community, builds that following, he really mentors and coaches people. So, so yeah, that's, it, it's, it, 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 and again, he has mentored people kind of one-on-one -on -one privately, but I wanted to bring him on this stage so that he can share that with all of us here today. So hopefully you are excited. So let's uh, switch gears. So I'm going to stop share. Um, so I'll really, yeah, go ahead, share your screen and take us through the exciting stuff. Showing up for everybody. Yep, looks good. Excellent. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the warm introduction. I know we are related, but <laughs> it's still welcome. And it is such a pleasure to be with all of you. I have followed this community so closely and it is inspiring to see the work that happens in the groups that many of you lead and certainly the conversations that happen at this forum. So it is a particular pleasure to be a guest here and I'll try to do justice to this topic. Before we get started, I'm going to do just a few things that are only necessitated because we live in an overt <laughs> uh, litigious society. Uh, so just, just a quick disclaimer, I hate to do these always when I start these things, but if you hear something here, you apply or you misapply, then the two Avis, Avi and AK, are not to be held responsible or liable for that. And with humility, I will say that this is an extremely vast topic. There's so many swim lanes you can get in. It is nearly impossible to do justice in one session. So in addition to that, uh, we are looking to learn from all of you as well. So if there are comments along the way, please do keep sharing if something has worked for you, okay? This is, this is definitely a two-way street. We wanna keep it engaging. But with that, uh, let me start uh, by just framing a few things so that we have some swim lanes that we can explore and focus on a little bit today on this fast topic. And to get us started, uh, why don't you start putting into the chat uh, why it is that you wish to get promoted? Uh, why might that be important to you? So again, all panelists and attendees, uh, not, not just the panelists, and put those in chat so that we can see why you might be interested in that. Yeah, yeah, I'm certainly keen to see uh, everybody's responses too. And, and I hope it's not the case for you where you have never thought about it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, maybe there is somebody and if that's so, would love to hear that too. Like, oh, I never thought about it, right? Um, actually, that may have been true for me for a big part of my career. Oh, man, that, I, I, I feel slightly ashamed of that now. So 15 plus years I was in corporate America and I know I was always jockeying for promotion, but maybe maybe for a long time, I didn't quite know or think why. I know as I got later into my career, I did start to ask that question really, really hard. I was like, why, why is it? Uh, so let's see, so Ross is saying, I don't feel I'm being paid what I'm worth. That makes sense. Kirk is saying not so much wanting a promotion as to grow in influence within the community. That, yes. that definitely makes sense. Ian is saying boost my work morale. Yeah, I know, I know I struggle with that. I mean, a lot of times you go through the work and yeah, you go through the annual performance reviews and they give you that, uh, whatever, meets expectations, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, right? It's just like, yeah, is there, is there all there is to it? Sheena Watson is saying self-motivation and satisfaction. Yeah, so, so maybe it's not an external thing. Maybe it's not, not about outside. It's like you want to prove to yourself that, hey, I can improve myself and so forth. Great, folks. Yeah, let's, let's hear from a few more of you. Come on. Yeah, we definitely want to have it uh, interactive. We want to pull you in on the con conversation. Mebs is saying be in position to make decisions instead of being a follower. Ooh, ouch. That, that gets, that definitely touches a nerve with the Power BI crowd because often we see the potential of this tool, but we don't have, don't have the, you know, kind of the, uh, again, that, that position to make that decision. Uh, Dimitar is saying, cause I make, uh, cause I make management's decision easier and smoother. 
So great. So I, th- I think we did hear quite a few different perspective and, and uh, guys, thanks for sharing. And I'm, and I'm glad you're not in the boat that I was, which was not thinking like, why do we need a promotion? I think asking that question of yourself is important. So thanks for sharing that perspective. Uh, all right, Eric, carry on. That was extremely helpful for me as well. And uh, many of the things that I was thinking about, as we think about chasing a promotion, there are definitely many things that come to mind and money is certainly up there. And we're not going to sit here and judge anyone who's only chasing a promotion for money. That's what floats your boat. And that's what enables whatever it is that you are looking to accomplish in life. Good for you. And as far as getting paid a just wage for the work that you're putting in, somebody mentioned that comment. I think that's outstanding. But I also heard a little bit along this other theme, which is you either want to be a leader and you want to lead people and you derive some satisfaction out of that, or you get more fulfillment that way because when you are in a leadership position, you find that you are able to influence those decisions. And especially in medium to big size organizations, that can be so key. And ultimately we wanna put points on the board, we wanna win, we wanna do stuff. But to do that, you need a certain amount of authority, you need a certain amount of influence in organizations. And fortunately in most organizations with today's cultures, it still comes with your formal type. So uh, again, uh, taking responsibility of a team, driving influence, whatever it might be, that is a bucket. Uh, the fuel that drives us. That this is what uh, Avi was just talking about uh, with someone as far as, hey, it's not about the external world. This is about internal affirmation. It is the fuel that drives me, the recognition internally that I am adding value and that value is creating something out there in the world, out there in society. And uh, that is the ultimate place, really. I think uh, those of us who might be at the self-actualization plane, I'm not there yet, nowhere close, but it should be about that sense of satisfaction and fulfillment that comes with creating more value for others. And again, these these are on very different planes, but uh, just a few buckets. There are, I am sure, many other buckets. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but a few thoughts as uh, we can consider and ponder this topic today. So how about a faster promotion, right? We can talk about uh, those 80 hour work weeks and we can talk about many of those things that we have in the playbook. And again, you see the asterisk because everyone's situation is unique and it is impossible to narrate some path that will work for everybody. But there are some common themes that tie us together. Usually we can find some of those commonalities and focus on, okay, if this is the broad situation, what do we do? So that, that's what this is about. So what does that have to do with watering a plant? Well, there are certain things here that can be influenced in a limited way. And there is something that can be influenced in a significant way. So the soil, the environment that the plant is in, Uh, Less you can do with that. Now, the advanced gardeners among you, and I am a tenacious gardener, will talk about soil remediation and whatnot. But the soil is the soil for the most part, especially if you're doing something on scale, right? You're not going to (laughs) just transplant soil. Can't change that. The nature of the plant can't change that. You you can't put an apple tree somewhere and expect that it will give you bananas, right? So limited things to influence those factors. But how much you water it, You can influence that. Every day you can influence that. What fertilizer to use? How to take care of that plant? We can influence that a heck of a lot more than those other two factors. And that's what it comes to, boils down to when it comes to career as well. There are certain elements, like the type of organization that you work in. That's the type of organization you work in. Could you jump ship and go somewhere? And that's a talk for another day because promotions often come with jumping ship, but we won't touch that here. As far as an organization that you're in, you kind of have to deal with the factors, right? Organizations rarely, especially the larger ones, rarely change their color very quickly. And even if you are in a smaller organization, typically the the small team will govern the culture. And unless you have turnover, that small team is gonna set the bar there as far as how things are going to go. And then when, uh, when we think about the boss and leadership style, that's another one, right? Uh, often we talk about <laughs> you can be in one of the best companies and if your boss and your boss's boss are jerks, then 
your experience is going to be horrendous, no matter how good the company is. So your immediate neighborhood absolutely has significant influence. Your immediate boss has a lot of influence, depending on who they are. Definitely between your boss and their boss, they're controlling a lot of the destiny in established organizations. But this is where you come in, what you can do, your personal branding, your personal efforts to advance your case and how you position yourself for promotion. So we'll talk about some of these factors. And uh, because we want to make it a discussion, I'm going to go through some of these quickly, but keep the chats going. And Avi will catch me up on questions. We'll address these as the slides end here. So meritocracy versus bureaucracy. I worked in both. Many bureaucracies, they're literally checklists. You cannot get promoted from this band to that band until you have checked a few boxes, have served in a certain position, have taken certain trainings and classes. There are organizations like that. There are organizations who go by tenure. You cannot get promoted without that. And then you have meritocracies. It's a beautiful world, right? You get recognized for the value you create. But the key is you can advance faster in both of these types of environments by focusing on your branding, by focusing on the things that you control. Another big piece, small versus large. Smaller organizations, again, the value you create, much easier to have that noticed. Large organizations, you might be killing yourself working those 80 hour weeks. Somebody else is getting the credit for that. Often happens. You have to go out of your way. You have to think about strategies that work for you to showcase yourself, to make sure that you shine through that crowd and set yourself apart. So people see, yes, there is an emerging leader there. Harder in larger organizations. Growing versus declining, stagnant. When you talk about luck, right? And many times it's just these dynamics. I met so many people who happen to be at the right place at the right time. And this company was ready for a big takeoff, right? And as they took off, they just got promotion after promotion after promotion because they had a reliable person. And they were like, as we are growing, we are going to keep giving this person more responsibility. You can still get promoted faster in a stagnant organization. It's tougher though, right? It's tough. When you've got all these fat cats, you are <laughs> vice president, senior vice president, and whoever else, all nice and cozy, it's a steady business. It's a mature business, maybe it's a cash cow, not much changes, we don't mess with too many things, right? And everybody makes a little bit of a bonus at the end of the year, as long as you toe the line, you'll be fine, right? You, you can be a lifer. Increasingly that's going away, but there are still many industries where, especially in developed economies, the market stepped out, right? So I, I work for Hershey's, how much more candy and chocolate can be fed to Americans? Not that much, <laughs> not, not that, that much of a growth market, right? Technology industries, healthcare, many other industries, growth industries. Yeah. We talked about the boss piece and this, this is one that is so critical, right? Is your boss on the left end of that spectrum where they're that nurturing person who's actively thinking about your growth, actively thinking about how you are going to develop and go to your next step and talking to you to understand what it is that you want out of life. And if you are confused, investing time and guiding you so you figure out what it is that perhaps you're looking for in life. That's an extreme ideal. And I doubt that beyond a few percentage of supervisors, managers, and bosses out there in the world are on that end of the spectrum. Usually the reality is something in the middle. Now on the right hand side, I'm just trying to remember what I was trying to depict there. A tool, yes. If, uh, <laughs> if your boss is a jerk and we unfortunately find more of these types out there, completely self-centered, just wanna make sure they look good. They could care less what happens to you. They owe you that annual evaluation that meets, meets expectations piece that Avi was saying. Happy to give you whatever you're looking for to the extent that it doesn't inconvenience them maybe. So all kinds of people out there, but usually they tend to be on that right-hand side of the spectrum. So you got to watch out for yourself, right? That's why you're investing time in yourself being on the session. So with that, let's, uh, let's interact a little bit more. Uh, how many of you feel out there that you have a boss that might care about your promotion and it doesn't even have to be your promotion. 
cares about your yeah. growth, your development. Yeah, exactly. Man, this was a, a trip down memory lanes. So of course, I was thinking about my 15 plus years in corporate America and uh, and, and, and yeah, yeah, so folks, we definitely want to hear what kind of boss you have right now. And I, I think I'll, I'll agree with Abril here that I've had a lot of bosses and yes, some were phenomenal. I mean, some were so good that I would use the line that I would follow them over the edge of a cliff. They were that good and they were incredible. But of course, um, you know, the, that was the good part, but the bad part was that, they, well, nothing ever lasts, I guess. But yeah, you know, I, I would be there around and either they would switch jobs or I would switch jobs or something would happen, reorg, and then I'd move on. So that was, that was very few though, only one or two really. And uh, some were meh and some were actively bad. Like they were, they were making my life hell. So let's see. So Kirk is saying he's lucky to have a great boss. That's awesome. Dan <laughs> is saying, absolutely, my boss is my superpower. <laughs> okay. She fiercely supports my growth. <laughs> that is great. That, that is great. Kaptan is saying, um, the boss does support, but her boss doesn't. Yeah, yeah, that can be an interesting dynamic where maybe your immediate manager is good, but but the one above yeah. isn't. So yeah, let's folks, let's hear from some more of you and and meanwhile maybe I'll, I'll i'll you know reminisce a little bit more about so i know there was a time at microsoft when uh, i got hired into a position and 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 yeah so Abra was talking about the control you have over soil and planning yes you can change jobs and i did and i was really happy with my manager he was this great guy leo perez from argentina yeah just good energy really nice chap and um, and and he hired me, and he was focused on my growth. But I think just a few months into the job, uh, he, he comes in and says, "Hey guys, I'm I'm leaving. I'm heading back to Texas to be closer to my family." And everything changed. And then we got this person who just he, he was just a head scratcher. Like nobody could figure out like what's he doing? Who's he trying to help? Is he he, he wasn't even trying to help himself? But I had this line that I kept saying to myself just so I could get through that period. And I said to myself that good employees outlast bad managers. And in that particular instance, I was lucky that that came out to be true. Although I'm not sure if that's <laughs> always true. That was just a hope that I was clinging on to. Uh, great. So uh, let's see, Sanjeev is saying, not really, as long as my promotion suits their own career progress. So yeah, I've certainly experienced that where they kind of put themselves first. And yeah, if, if it's in line, then yeah. Ashwini is saying, my boss does support my growth. That's great. I'm so happy to hear these folks. Uh, uh, it's a little bit jealous too. <laughs> uh, I think it's John that's saying, management supports me as I continue to learn new skills with Power BI. You know, I, I have a feeling that maybe we have a slightly skewed crowd. So usually Power BI folks are kind of the get-go people. They step up and and and, and do awesome stuff. And, and as in doing so, they get support. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting. But let's see. Let's read a few more. Uh, that was John Gibbons earlier. Elena Cantura is saying, my boss is supporting me, but we are all overloaded with work. So we're exploring new stuff together. That's good, I suppose. Uh, when it fits into the current job needs. Stephen is saying boss is supportive, but at the same time, sometimes has unrealistic expectations. Ooh, so I think a bit of the same here is like, there's too much work and unrealistic expectations. Alex is saying, unfortunately for me, I've had one of those bad bosses and, bo uh, and bosses to my boss for the last five years, ouch, had to resign and reinvent my career from, from next month. Yeah, that, that definitely has to be challenging. Srinivas is saying, mostly I've had damagers, people who have damaged my career. So uh, yeah, folks, you heard my experience. You heard uh, all of the other comments. So yeah, I'm, I'm eager to hear from overall the rest of the journey. Uh, where does this go? That was uh, so heartwarming to hear how many of you have supportive managers. That gives me hope that overall, slowly but surely, we are transforming from the place that we've been in to a place that is nurturing, and as it should be, that your manager, your supervisor is not the boss. They're your coach, they're your supporter, and they are there. And one of the core accountabilities and responsibilities that they have is personal, uh, 
investment into you, so you grow. So personal brand, uh, very easy to say, right? Uh, invest in yourself and move forward. There's a lot of nuance that goes into it. So let's talk about the context around the organization and the boss type. We'll go back to some of the things that we have explored. If you are in a large organization, your branding becomes key. And it starts with asking yourself, what is your brand about? Not how good of a worker you are, what is your brand about? And when asked this question, I can assure you, after many decades of work, I still could not answer it the first time somebody asked me that. Can you in one line say what you stand for? And you can draw from examples out there. Uh, we'll use the most cliche, Nike, <laughs> right? And what does Nike stand for? But you can also go to more niche brands, right? So if you think about a Patagonia, right? If you think about a brand that even has limited appeal, but where it has appeal, it has fierce loyalty. What are the aspects of that brand? So you have to think about that. The larger the organization, having clarity as to what your brand is, is going to be key because then you take actions to build that brand. So if you build your brand around fearless problem solver, okay, that, that's what your brand is going to be. And that's why people will be attracted to you in a large organization because anytime somebody has a big challenge, they are like, you know what? I should go talk to this person because they seem to be a great problem solver. Okay. You could have a reputation as a leader who can build teams. Okay. That's a brand that can inspire people who are looking to drive transformation. If you're looking to blow up a part of the organization or start a completely new department or do things that have not been done before, here's somebody who can come in and build a new team and get that team off the ground. Your brand can be about innovation, right? So you're the creative thinker. You come in and you find new ways to solve problems. You can think of solutions that can be deployed, right? And you push the boundaries outside of where the organization usually operates. You are the person uh, whose brand is the connected person. Internal, external, their network is the best, right? So you are the fountain of knowledge. If anybody wants to come to you uh, for anything, you, you, you can usually direct them where to go. So again, based on what your brand is and your ability to deliver against the brand, because any of us can conceive something very beautiful, right? It's about then delivering against that. So then you have to ask those questions of yourself. What gives me fulfillment? What am I really good at? Combine all that and synthesize, how can I sharpen that focus as far as an external facing brand and then work on that? Large organizations, small organizations, medium organizations, different degrees to which this is needed, but it always helps. So it is contextual to organization, but important that you at least have that thought process, right? Then as far as the boss type, this is the one of the most critical ones. If you have a boss who is insecure and would never want to be outshined, you have to go about doing it very differently. You have to do it with a lot of stuff. Then you're building your brand behind the scenes. You're not talking over them in meetings. You're not outshining them in meetings and settings where they want to be talked off, right? But behind the scenes, you're orchestrating. You are sharing things to advance things so people see, yep, here's an optimist, here's a positive person. And they're using their personal time to invest into relationships across the organization to help to advance something. So again, how you go about building that brand can be uh, impacted in a big way. Another piece as far as for, uh, branding, what kind of culture do you have? Is it a culture where people who shout and scream the loudest and are shiny objects get more valued? Do you work for an organization where the humble are appreciated? Those that deliver through their work and their work speaks for itself. I worked for an organization where humility was literally a value on the list. And when we would find people, even in interviews, just being 
way boastful about, I did this and I did that. And that's always a risk, right? In interviews, making sure you're tooting your horn, but not making it come across like you're this jerk who never really recognizes the team. But forget interviews, even on an ongoing basis, the people who, who did not showcase humility, they rarely got promoted in that organization. So again, it can backfire if you're not aware and tailoring your brand to the circumstances that you're operating within the environment that you're operating. Another piece then is uh, the effort and the time investment. Many times people have said, I want to get promoted. How many folks have you met with in your organization regarding that thought? Have you recruited people as mentors and supporters? I know of somebody who I used to work with, uh, they had a wonderful strategy. They would go talk to some people in the organization, find out what it was that they were doing that they needed help with. They would then provide that help and build that relationship in whatever capacity they could help. And then when it came time for the lobbying to begin for the next round of promotions, <laughs> this person would just talk to all of those people and say, hey, would you put in a good word for me? That was a lot of orchestrated investment. Did they have to go above and beyond their job? Yes. Did they have to work 80 hours? No. They just had to come across as somebody who was a little compassionate, who was caring about driving more value in the organization. And that not only built their brand, but because they helped people, taking 30 minutes here, 15 minutes there, staying the extra 10 minutes to help them with something. And that helped, right? If you are on the senior echelons of the organization, one of the things that you have to invest time in is yourself, because often we get obsolete. The world is transforming at an incredible pace. And if you have just been caught up in work and you are in the same swim lane, going at a million miles an hour, but somebody asks you, hey, a pandemic just hit, what do you think that would do in terms of workforce transformation? And you're like, uh, I can tell you about this analysis that I've been working on. Uh, I don't know that as a senior leader, uh, caught, being caught unaware on what is shaping your industry, what is shaping the spaces, not just in your work lane, but in totality. So you have to invest time in yourself. When you invest time in yourself, you immediately burnish your brand because the things that come out of your mouth distinguish you immediately versus the crowd. The higher up you go, the more the risk of doing that because you can delegate, right? You can hire smart people, you can delegate and you can get the work done. But what are you doing to improve your own skills, improve your own knowledge? Without that, hard to move forward. And some of this is about prudent risk taking. You are possibly going to operate in a culture where you might rub somebody the wrong way as you champion yourself. And that's okay, right? An organization that does not give credit to someone who's proactively doing something, even if it is to perhaps advance their career, maybe you don't belong there anyway. So go take those risks, right? And this is where I will contradict myself a little bit. So you have a boss who does not, does not like to be outshined. Maybe outshine them every now and then anyway, right? So we often put ourselves in those boxes. It's okay to know where the lines are in the sand, but it is just that, lines in the sand. You can redraw them. You'd be surprised. A little bit of courage goes such a long way. So many times, not speaking up in meetings, not raising your hand way up high and saying, this is a bad decision, right? Even if that decision doesn't change, people will remember you raised your hand when many were thinking the same thing in the room and you said it. And yes, maybe even temporarily, that gives you a mini setback. But long-term, it can only benefit you because that integrity, that moment of courage will not only drive your confidence and allow you to look at yourself in the mirror with more pride the following mornings, but you will also be able to figure out again, is this the organization that I wish to be long-term if it doesn't recognize and appreciate that behavior? So 
a lot of nuances, a lot of thoughts that go into personal branding. And again, this is not an exhaustive list, but hopefully that, that gives us just a few lenses to think through. But then what about the 80 hours? Are the 80 hours completely useless? No, no, they're not. Sometimes we all have to do the heavy lifting. I work weekends sometimes. Do I work weekends all the time? No. Do I compensate for the time I work over a weekend? You bet. I've figured out you only live once. And once that time is gone, away from your families, away from yourself, it never comes back. You've got to find that balance. You have to fight for that balance, right? And increasingly, I think those lines are blurred. So it becomes hard. But hard work does pay. Sometimes you do have to work hard. Many of you might have read the uh, Malcolm Gladwell book, uh, Outliers, and how he makes those, uh, uh, yeah, how he makes the case about 10,000 hours of practice differentiating genius versus the average and the mediocre. Yes, yeah, so hard work is important. When you're learning a new skill, pour yourself into it. Work the weekend if you have to. Work 120 hours if you have to. But that's not a consistent formula. And what is even more interesting is, is it even creating value, right? Ultimately, it's about value. Because even compensation discussions, how those have to be had is how much value did I create versus how many hours I clocked, right? How many reports I churned out, how many analyses I completed, how many strategy uh, slide decks I wrote and created. Did I create value? Did I move the ball forward? Did I deliver points on the board? That's what it's about. Always think about that. The other piece is, can it be attributed to you? Is all of that going through? If not, then you have to find creative ways to make sure that it comes through. This is where you might find emails to a select folk, uh, uh, select body of uh, team members will go a long way in showcasing, oh, this person has done this work, right? Or somebody else sharing your work and seemingly taking credit. You just respond and you say something so astute about that work that people can immediately understand who has actually done the work, right? So hopefully it never comes to that for most of you. But yes, sometimes there can be politics. We are all human beings, all trying to stand out sometimes, right? So think about whether the work is actually being attributed to you. If not, then definitely that hard work is not paying off for you. And the worst piece is, and this can actually work counter to your ambitions, is it might work, hard work might work harder to keep you where you are. Because now, oh, I got this workhorse, right? And it's not just one boss. There might be a team of senior leaders who are like, eh, do we really want to move this person from here to there? Like she's doing such a phenomenal job there. And I don't know that we want to move her because who's going to backfill them, right? And so that can also cause an issue if you're doing too much. And that leads me to this last piece, succession planning. Whose are you on? Have you gone around and asked people? Just, and this is incredibly hard right now because we are working from home. And some of you mentioned that before the session started. So these used to be hallway conversations. These two used to be those ad hoc things, right? Where you would just pop your head into somebody's office, sit down for a quick chat. Now you have to schedule those things, right? And schedule time and say, hey, I'm looking for some guidance. And as you ask for that guidance, you can politely ask, hey, do you mind if uh, I asked you, who do you think will succeed you? If that is a role that you would covet, go ahead and ask that person. They might or might not share. If they don't, at minimum, most people are happy to share what kind of traits they would be looking for in someone. And then you can have a transparent conversation as the relationship develops and say, what would it take for me to get on that succession plan for you? Be your own advocate, be your own brand ambassador, control your destiny. Don't let the organization put your name in those tiny little boxes as they do the once a year maybe HR sponsored annual succession planning discussion. And many organizations don't do it at all, period. So take control of that piece. But again, coming back to the last point, who's on yours? How can you move if you have not groomed people around you on your team 
to do what you need to do. And again, the more senior you get, the more important this gets. Because again, you're doing important work, you have a lot of responsibilities, people do not wanna go through the pain of moving you and realizing they've got a gap to fill that will give them a lot of headaches. Nobody wants a headache, right? So think about this. And if you are fresh out of college and you have nobody working for you and you're like, yeah, great, what do I do? Do you have an internship program? Could you ask for an intern to be assigned to you? So next wave, they come back and maybe they replace you. Are there peers who would want your job? Are there people who would be interested in switching into your department who would want your job? How do you figure out there's a successor just waiting to take your position so that that is the last thing that stands between you and advancement? And you'd be surprised how many times people's careers have been held back because these pieces are not accurately engineered. So with that said, I said a lot. Uh, I'll turn it over to Avi for a second for a quick poll. Whew. Man, that was incredibly powerful. So guys, uh, I'm going to launch a poll and we do want to hear from all of you. Now, this has two questions. One, we want to understand if this added value to you. And next, of course, as Avi said at the beginning, that this is a vast topic. So we're also trying to decide um, what the next topic should be. So I'm going to launch the poll. Cool. So about 51%, well, it says 53. So about half of you have voted. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it up there just for a little bit more. And again, give you time to kind of pop in the question as well. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll queue up a question from, from me. Uh, boy, I, I will say that this, what, it, what this felt like, this felt like somebody had given me the playbook. And, and of course, when I look back at my life, I realized that uh, I was struggling so hard, but it was one of those things, if you don't even know the rules of the game, if you don't know how the game is played, how can you hope to succeed? And that's what I feel about my career when I look back. But I feel like just in this session, it feels like this was somebody giving me the playbook. Like, this is how the game is played. For example, a succession plan, I didn't even know the term. I didn't even know that something like this exists. That that was definitely a gem of wisdom. I, I will say, guys, that I feel so excited right now that I'm almost tempted to go back and get a 95 job. <laughs> not quite, <laughs> not quite, but I'm like, boy, I mean, if I do that all over again, I would have so much of an advantage as opposed to just scrambling around and yeah, burning the midnight oil and, and just kind of struggling through that. So um uh so um so uh so Avril, if you if you will i was definitely curious about so you know you mentioned that how the world is kind of remote now um does does that change things in what way um yeah what comes to the top of your mind like is there something that you said is this like core concepts and all of it applies you're going to do the same thing you need to do the same things just do them differently or does it change any of these fundamentals that, that you, you talked about? It changes quite a few fundamentals. So again, when we think about how the world operates, it's all about relationships at the end of the day, right? It's about trust. Mm. Trust is the lubricant that keeps us moving as a society. And that is no different within organizations. And how is trust built? Trust is built when we spend time with each other, when we talk to each other and can't always be about work. So one of the fundamental things that's been taken away from us is chit chat time, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, how are you? How's your family? Or catching up after meetings like, hey, that thing didn't make sense to me in there. Didn't make sense to you? Hey, I yeah. didn't understand that. Can you explain that to me? Mm -hmm. All of those simple things, all of those micro interactions that we took for granted now you have to think about orchestrating those artificially. You have to, right? You have to build a new muscle and say, hey, maybe I need to set up a 10 minute Zoom call doing nothing but just catching up with a dear colleague or catching up with somebody who just started in the organization because they must be new and they must be feeling really lonely trying to onboard, working remotely and not connecting with the team, right? So 
some fundamentals have changed in that way. And then other things that uh, where the game has to be played maybe a little more consciously and assertively and aggressively is, again, how do you shine through in the era of remote work, right? Yeah. You could stand there and in meetings and present certain things, but Zoom. Yeah. Are you, are you a good Zoom speaker? Do you have good eye contact on Zoom? Yeah. Do you come through with the appropriate eloquence and inflection? Is it time to invest in public speaking courses and mm -hmm. clubs? What do you need to do now to get yeah. that oomph, right? So yeah, yeah. Many, many so, different boy, so that that's really good. So folks, we, we definitely want to take your question. And Brian, uh, we see uh, your question in the Q&A box and we'll, we'll probably bring you online so we can have a conversation with you. But I want to follow up, follow that up because some people may be thinking that, oh, this is nice. When I'm remote, they can't see me, right? It's now, it's, it's, it's now, it, there's the work that matters, right? I mean, because yeah, I mean, everybody's disconnected. I'm at my home working on my own schedule. Yeah, they don't see me, they're gone, they're, right? So I'm just going to do my work and, and yeah, they're going to judge me on that. And of course, this, this mentality, I, I know I had it for a long time and I, and I meet people like that. It's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not into that. I'm, I'm not into quality. I let my work speak for myself. Are, are they deluded? What, what's, yeah, what, what's your take on that? On somebody saying, like, yeah, I don't want to bother with all that. I'm just going to work hard, uh, right? I'm just going to, yeah. What's, uh, what's, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, again, right? Uh, you cannot use generalizations. For many people, they mm -hmm. don't bother with a dang thing all their careers, they just do their work and opportunity presents itself and they move, yeah. right? Or they don't move and they're okay with that. So that's obviously comes down to personal choice and preference. But to the extent that you are ambitious, to the extent for whatever reason, fulfillment, more responsibility, being able to lead a team, more compensation, whatever your drivers might be once again, if you're looking to get ahead, I think you do have to think about this consciously and your brand is even more important and it is harder to build that brand in a remote work situation. And it is even yeah. harder to build that brand if you are joining as a new team member, because yeah. those who are there might have established some of those connection points before the pandemic, you have not. Wow. Yeah, but, but, but I think you're, you're right. It, it depends on, like, we're not gonna judge people. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. what I like to say is that, hey, if you're happy with the results you're getting, if, the happy, if you're happy mm -hmm. with the life that you have, good for you, we, we are happy for you. Yeah. But, um, and I think I heard a flavor from this in, in your uh, talk as well. So I, I like to say is that, um, but if you want to be something different, you got to do something different. True. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's really cool. So let's see. Um, I want to read off at least a few of the comments, but I'm just going to call out some of this stuff. Uh, so the big takeaway is Sanjeev said, creating value through, uh, oh, okay, that was earlier, sorry. So John Gibbons was set a goal and work towards a, uh, have my personal work brand clear and ready to share. Jesse mm -hmm. said that. I, I think that was something new for me too. I'd never quite thought about it that way. Uh, Larry said, my takeaway is that you need to build value, but don't make it that you're under, under place. So that, that was again, one of those weird things where you have to kind of balance the line. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, we would make sure to share the notes. And yeah, Dan Barrett also liked the personal brand idea. Succession plan was an interesting one. Investing in myself, that was a good one. Must think about personal branding. That certainly seems to have hit a chord. Um, great, great, great. So, all right. So, uh, so Brian, let's uh, let's see if we can have you talk to you. See what's going on. All right, Brian. See if you can unmute yourself. And so your 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 statement was. Understand the direction of your choosing industry. So, um, where, uh, yeah, just just tell us a bit more uh, about that. Hello. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, fantastic. I'm sorry. Employer or new manager, and understanding that you kind of see where the puck is going. And I guess, how do you do that without coming off as arrogant? Meaning that they will mm. often ask you, like, how will you improve this particular situation? But it'd be like me kind of asking you, how would you, I, how would, uh, how should I improve my marriage or whatever? You give me advice, but you don't know all the particulars. And so you're asking mm -hmm. me a really encompassing question, but I don't have, you know, the wealth of knowledge about the inner workings of your company and those dynamics. So I can only speak in generalities. 
So, so sorry, you cut out a little bit. So I, I got one part where you were talking about how do you share it in a more sensitive manner so that it doesn't come across as overbearing. You don't feel like you're stepping your toes or, or telling everybody how smart you are. Is that no, right? Yeah, I'm saying that in relationship to a manager that or prospective employer that would ask you how to improve a particular company, a process or something like that. Oh, you it, don't know it. all the particulars, but they're asking yeah. you to make judgments on process yeah. improvements, but you don't know all the players and all, if many of the significant factors. Got it. So maybe maybe this is a networking meeting or you're meeting with a potential employer. Maybe it's in a job interview and, and they said, hey, I mean, yeah, I mean, how do you think we can improve this? So how do you share your opinion when you might not have uh, the, all, all the relevant knowledge? Correct. Uh, so uh, Avril, yeah, what, what, would, what would be your advice for that case? Yeah, this is a common question that uh, one should be prepared for, for interviewing in particular. And I would say... Uh, my, my MO on that is you start with a dose of humility. With, uh, you just acknowledge what you just said. Mm-hmm. I'm not an expert in this yet, and I have no idea as to all the forces that might be driving the situations and circumstances that you find yourself in. But based on what I see with my fresh set of eyes as the outsider coming in, mm-hmm. I see X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And that X, Y, and Z could be industry related. I don't know about your company, but Mm -hmm. macro level, or even if you don't know about the industry, general business economy. If I think about some of the macro trends shaping industry these days. Yeah. So take it to the level where you are comfortable and then give your answer at that level. So you that, know, that, that, yeah, that, that's a good one. So let's role play that a little bit. So I, let, let's start at the macro level. And I know I can speak to that because COVID it has been on your mind. But, but imagine if you're talking to an employer, how would you say about it? I, I know what I would say, because for one, I generally believe in this. What I would say is that, yes, it's been an incredible challenge, but it's, it's going to be an opportunity for the ones who are willing to act and step up, right? So, so it, it's one of those things, it, it, yeah, we can, we can run around like um, headless chickens or we can think about what is the action that we can take at a personal level and at an organizational level so that three years from now, we'll look back and say, this is the best thing that happened to me, right? And of course, I can relate. So side story, I can relate to that on a personal level when I was laid off and that was a painful experience. But a few years later, I would look back and say, hey, that's the best thing that happened to me because the things that led me to. So, so that's kind of the macro level. So somebody can comment about that. Um, can you give us an example of a, of a more granular level, maybe a specific example in your job and was like, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, so, let's I say, uh, yeah. so I work in the healthcare industry right now. Healthcare mm-hmm. industry is again, a vast ocean. There are yeah. so many forces, government, regulatory, uh, insurance plans, healthcare providers. You truly need years to understand it at a level where you would have a meaningfully articulated answer. Mm -hmm. But coming in, you could say, so if I asked you, and I currently work for uh, one of the largest integrated health systems in Georgia called Wellstar, if I asked you that question, hey, how would you drive more volume for Wellstar? Yeah. Oh, God. That's scary. If I just gave you that question, even without knowing anything, you you might ask, one, you might ask you the follow-up question. It's like, hey, why is volume important to you? Oh, that's a good one. Or you might ask another follow-up question is, what type of volume are you looking to go get? Right? Mm. There, 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 there are ways to drive volume. Do you want profitable volume? What are the drivers yeah. of profit then? So some quick clarifying questions help better frame the question for you to answer. It also gives you more time to think about the question. Mm-hmm. Then you can launch into your answer and say, and you could say something like, well, we all know in terms of macro trends, aging population, that's a trend that is not going away anytime soon. Yeah. So care for chronic conditions, care for the elderly, in increasingly automated, delivered and enabled digitally, mm-hmm. care at home. These are trends that we are all aware about. So if Wellstar yeah. wants to go pursue any type of growth, this has to be one element in the strategy. Now, whether we do it within Wellstar or we do it by partnering with others who are really good at that stuff, that we can talk about. 
Got it, got it. So interesting. So everybody knows, that, well, at least in the U.S., that we have this aging population. The baby boomers are getting older. And, and, and so, yeah, so knowing that, you can, so you can speak about something macro. But what, what folks, I hope you picked that up. That was, that's a true ninja skill in job interviews and really any conversation, right? even day-to-day conversation, conversation with the boss, which was asking questions. Because of course he, he talked about the benefits there. Right? I mean, you can ask that with a question. For one, it 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 does make you a better listener, and you also come across as a better listener, right? So you seem like a better listener, and and of course it generally does make you a better listener, right? So that is, I mean, yeah, that that that's stay stay focused on that. That that one is a really really good skill to have, and again, being able to ask good questions. Um, yeah, I, I even feel like uh, the interviews that I have won where I've been offered the job, I think that was one of the key things. So, so you know, when they ask you, uh, like they ask you a lot of questions and they say, oh, do you have any questions for me? And I've interviewed people where I would ask them, do you have any questions for me? And a lot of them would say, no. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? Right? Because again, it's, it's not like, oh, do you have any? It's your opportunity, to tell them how engaged you are. It's your opportunity to tell them that you research the company and you're interested in them and that you were listening to them during the interview, right? And again, as Avi said, you can just pick up on their questions. It's like, hey, you asked me a lot of questions around uh, increasing volume. I want to understand why volume is important. What does that do for you, right? So, so and it's, it's so easy, but a lot of people don't do it, right? I mean, employer asks them, oh, do you have any questions for me? Like, no, no, I'm good. Everything sounds good. Oh God, you probably just lost the interview. All right, great. So, um, hey, Brian, thank you so much for that question. Did, th- did, that, did that help? Yes, it very much helped. It definitely gave me some insight as to how I can uh, go from the, uh, the large to the small oh, if, yeah. Yeah, based upon knowledge level. So that was very helpful. So thank you so much. Great. Hey, I, mm-hmm. I learned something too. So thank you so much for that question. So folks, again, I mean, that's why I love Zoom. We can bring people on and, and have this chat. Hey, uh, I, I want to make sure, do you have a hard stop at uh, Right now, or, or you can go for no, okay. that. Okay, let's let's keep going. I see other questions in there too. Oh, okay, cool. So, so again, folks, uh, do us a favor. Put your questions in the Q and A. So, we do have a question from uh, Mebs, which is a good one. So, let's see if we can take that one on. And Mebs, oh uh, well, okay. So, I think Mebs had to drop off, but uh, we'll take the question. Which uh, hold on, let me take care of this one. So, Mebs was asking, how do you know when to ask for promotion? Ooh, that's a yeah, what's 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 the answer to that? Yeah, the short answer it, it depends. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think there are a few indicators. If you are wondering, hey, is it time? Am I ready? Many many times we ask ourselves that question, right? Am I yeah. ready? Uh, well, there's one element that can be a good indicator that you are ready. If you find that whatever your boss is doing or whatever the person uh, in the role that you are targeting is doing, that you could do that, majority yeah. of it. Maybe not all of it, <laughs> but majority of it. That's a good indicator that you're yeah. ready. And you know, you I'm just I'm just laughing so hard because I'm thinking how many times have I been in a, in a situation where I felt that, dang, I can do this better than better, <laughs> better than that person. I mean, or sometimes I've thought, man, a monkey could do a better job, but that's that's for another day. OK, cool. So that that's that's a good indicator. Are there, are there more? Are there others? Yeah. So to come back to the question about actually asking someone. Uh, yeah. that, that is uh, dependent on, again, a lot of the things we've talked about. What type of organization do you work in, right? Mm -hmm. In some organizations, the only opportune times to honestly have that conversation might be in the annual career and performance discussion that you have or the biannual check-ins and things like that, or the formal discussion your boss is mandated to have with you. (laughs) Yes, many many of us have organizations like that. Now, if you don't have that structure, Mm -hmm. then I assume you work for a smaller company that doesn't mind having those conversations whenever you want to have them. So in that case, it's not about when, it's about how. So Mm -hmm. just like having any difficult conversation or important conversation, you need to make sure that your receiving party or the audience knows that it's coming. You have to set it up. So Mm -hmm. again, we are all remote these days, so it becomes harder. Otherwise you would say, as you are passing somebody's cubicle or office, uh, hey, 
uh, I could use your guidance on uh, something career related. Is it okay if I set up a few minutes to chat about that? And mm -hmm. then you set up that meeting and you had that conversation. They know what it's about. They'll yeah. not be surprised. And you can, you can walk into the promotion piece saying, hey, as far as career advancement, th this is what I'm thinking or uh, I feel certainly that at this point I maxed out everything I needed to run in this job. And of course, if I continue just based on different business circumstances, I'll learn something, but I I'm looking for something else. I'm looking for more. However mm -hmm. you approach that, uh, you can have that. Now in a remote setting, you, you might want to have a quick phone call first and say, hey, I have some uh, thoughts that I've been having about uh, career advancement and I was wondering mm -hmm. if I could just set up some time with you, but I uh, want to check first, is that okay? And, and so again, depending on the level of formality and uh, God forbid politics in the organization, you, you might have to approach it differently. But the other piece is, again, you, you don't have to talk about a promotion. You can talk about taking on additional responsibilities, right? Mm -hmm. You can just say, hey, at any point, there's no organization that I know of They'll tell people it's not the opportune time to talk about taking on more. <laughs> wow. So you, you can always frame the discussion from a standpoint of, hey, I think I could create more value for the organization. And uh, I, I'm just wondering if uh, I were to look at that, uh, what, what are the opportunities uh, from a career advancement standpoint? That is something that uh, I'm interested in at a personal level as well. That's, I think, a good tip that yeah if you if you don't feel quite ready or the situation doesn't feel that it's 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 right to talk about the promotion you can always uh and 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 i would probably reframe it i i, I always say that uh um i mean people have a lot more leeway in shaping their career than i think they imagine Right. So it's, it doesn't always have to be additional responsibility. You're taking more and more work. It's like, oh, that's how I'm going to get promoted. Like, I'm going like, to do the work of like three people, right? I mean, th that's not necessarily you can You can shape your career, right? So I think feel empowered to have those discussions with managers saying, hey, these are the these are things I'm doing. And, 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 and yeah, you know, but I love doing this part. Can I do more of that? I think I can add more value to the company for that. So you are asking for additional responsibility, but at the same time, you can also have the discussion that, Hey, I mean, for this part, that's pretty routine. And we have, you know, Joe on the team who's, who, who seems to be very well worse with it. Is it okay to kind of transition? So, so yeah, so you, you can keep it balanced for yourself. Don't feel like you have to take everything on, but definitely shape that in a, in a, in a more conscious way. It's like, yep, I want to focus on things where I add more value. And it's not about like, Oh, I'm going to keep the good work and chuck the bad work. I mean, we all have our strengths and uh, the stuff that you don't enjoy. Maybe Joe loves doing that. And so of course let Joe operate in, in their zone of genius and you operate and grow in that zone of genius. So I think that discussion, I, I love that part. Yeah. I, I want to react to a comment that is very interesting and might be of interest for the community here. Uh, mm -hmm. What about asking to continue to work for a company, but staying on as a consultant? Would it be fair to ask for the same money, no benefits? To me, this would be the ultimate promotion working for myself. Wow. And that was from Jay. Jay, if you're yeah. still on, uh, I think, again, uh, certainly depends on what kind of environment you're operating in. But as long as that is a model you have seen in the company, it's definitely easy then and say, yes, uh, you know, hey, as I look at what my priorities are within my professional and personal life, I mm -hmm. think I would add the most value this way. And that yeah. would be continuing this relationship, continue to deliver value in this area and uh, ask for that. Now, if that kind of arrangement, of, uh, it's not a consultant culture and you might be the first who might ask for something like that, then that's a very different situation. In that case, you might have to plant some seeds first and mm -hmm. say, hey, what if, right? Paint a picture and let people first wrap their heads around that what if scenario. And, and then you can advance the conversation a little bit. As far as compensation, I would say, well, why box yourself in and say, bah, same money, no benefits. I will tell you that any consultant charges more and mm -hmm. the consultant has to charge more because this is a risk reward relationship. When we choose that job, we are giving up the uncertainty of not having to worry about our next paycheck. By giving up that uncertainty, so our risk profile for income comes down, it becomes steady. 
we also bring down the earning potential. Mm -hmm. As a consultant, you are taking on more risk. Your income stream can dry up. You have to constantly feed that funnel. But, but to the extent you are great at what you do, you should charge market rate, nothing less. And always remember from a pricing strategy standpoint, easier to start high and lower, harder to start low and go. Yeah. So just a few yeah. times. Yeah, hey, hey that, that's great. So hey, Joe, we, we, uh, let's see if we can hear from you. Uh, and, and first of all, I would like to hear if that helped. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Perfect. So, uh, oh, there you are. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, did that, uh, 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 did the response help? Did, did it provide yeah, some Yeah, actually, it did. T because uh, uh -huh. we actually do have some people there that are consultants for different types of things. I'm like, well, if that, you know, how would I do that? So, when, it, when he was talking about, yeah, if, if it's already an environment there, it makes it easier. Yeah. And then how to approach it helped out a lot too. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and and I think there could be a few ways around it. I was actually having a discussion pretty recently with somebody who was in the exact same situation. And, and, and one way could be that I think it's a little bit like how, I mean, I'm imagining myself walking to my manager's, manager's door and, and saying what you put here. Now, I know this is a private conversation, so I'm not saying you meant to say it that way, but if that's what's in my heart, I, I can't imagine walking to my manager's room saying, hey, you know what? I, I really don't want to work here as an employee. Just make me a consultant. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, we can talk about pay and yeah, I want to work. I mean, I would find it a little awkward. One way to do it is that you go to them and you say that, hey, I've been really thinking about kind of my life and career and where I want to go. And I want to move in a different direction. I want to explore some new things. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if there's some flexibility for me to reduce my work hours, right? And, 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 and I think that's a gentler way of opening that door. Say, hey, I'm, I'm committed to this company. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I'm around for you. But can we reduce my work hours? So, so you can, again, I mean, you can think about it, right? So you can, you can kind of do a transition. So you say, hey, reduce my work hours. And then um, well, if you are doing important work, then typically what's going to happen is that they're going to notice some pain when you do use a work. I was like, oh God, this is hard to do. And then you can have that conversation saying, hey, you already know that I want to move in this new different, 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 different direction, but I see that the company has needs too. What if we, uh, what if we did something different? What if instead of an, as an employee, uh, you know, I, I worked here as a consultant and that way, you know, you, you can expand and reduce my hours as you need. So it's going to benefit you, right? It's going to yeah. benefit the company. I mean, you don't have to keep like a full-time employee. As I pointed out, full-time employees can be very expensive, like the overhead costs and all that stuff, sort of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, 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 and, 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 and that's why people love contractors because they can just, you know, it's, it's kind of like expand. Oh, we need more help. We're going to get more help. Oh, we don't need more help. Like, I mean, business change, COVID layoffs, whatever, right? Yeah. So it's easier for them. So you are offering that and say, Hey, so if you switch to a consultant, I know there's a lot of work, but that, that will give you the win, give you the flexibility to kind of load me up with work if you need to. And, and, and if it doesn't, or as, as things transition on, maybe you bring somebody else on, whatever goes on in the company, right? Yeah. I'll work with you guys and you have the flexibility. So you win. And, and again, you may or may not say this part, but of course, I like you, Joe, Joe Stolls wins because this is the direction you wanted to move in, right? I mean, so, and you can, I would say, you be honest and mention that. I'd say, hey, and, and of course, you know that I, I want to move in this direction anyway. Like, I mean, this is, this is where I was headed when I had that original discussion to reduce my work hours. So that would, I would like enjoy that too. I would enjoy that flexibility. And, and when I do have downtime, when I'm not right. I mean, when there is not that much work on your side, then I can serve other people and other clients, which I, which I'm very eager to do. Um, all right, man. Hey, I'm excited for you. Um, I call myself the accidental entrepreneur. I mean, for me, this was not a planned thing. One thing led to the other and like, Oh, holy shit. I guess I'm working for myself. So I really admire the folks who put a more thoughtful approach into it. So yeah, good luck, mate. Good luck. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, all right, folks. So that has been great. I didn't see any other questions come in. I I do have a whole bunch written down for myself, but I guess I can I, I can follow up with Avril on that privately. So, folks, uh, I want to thank everybody for <laughs> joining today. 
and it was super incredible. And I really, we really appreciate all of your comments, all of your chats, all of your questions. And of course, it was it was so awesome to be able to talk to you. And then, um, so yeah, certainly, uh, let's thank our speaker one more time. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's, let us- There's one part in comment from me. Uh, Absolutely. Somebody just uh, said something as to how to reach out to me. Folks, hit me up on LinkedIn. Yeah. You, you won't yeah. find too many people with my name. <laughs> yeah, but no, I'll, I'll case, put the link. Uh, I put the link in the chat, so it's there. right there. And uh, yeah, so you can follow him or, or connect with him. Um, and, and of course, we have our poll result from earlier. Thank you for voting. So, uh, um, and, uh, and uh, let's uh, let's share that again. So, folks, yeah, we have uh, uh, the biggest one was. <laughs> this is very interesting. So, so folks, the topics that I put up there were around to go deeper into the ones that he mentioned. So, the, like the org culture and personal branding and so forth. But there were also some topics which I know Avril has helped me. Uh, over my career, like he has helped me with interview questions. He has, uh, you know, helped me with productivity and that sort of stuff. So I put those there as well. So I, yeah, I'm really intrigued that 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 seems to be a popular topic. So we have that. Thanks for your votes there. Um, and of course, most of you seems didn't enjoy the session. <laughs> Not everybody did, but uh, as one of my mentors <laughs> <laughs> says, that if you didn't piss off one person in the room. You didn't do your job <laughs> because then, <laughs> then you were not honest enough, blunt enough. You were not, you didn't speak forcefully enough about what you believe in <laughs> because yeah, there's always going to be the one person like, oh, this is crap. So uh, we appreciate that too. That, that feedback is appreciated too. All right, great. Um, uh, all right, folks. So again, thank you so much. And we will catch you again on one of our future Talk Power BI events. Yeah, take care and power on. Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Good luck to you guys. Right. Bye. Bye, guys.